This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Silkman's Comics, and this is that Bolo show. That's right. We're talking about the Be On The Lookout show, that original Bolo list. We cover the first appearances. We cover reader buzz. We cover variant buzz and a long-term play every new comic book day. And this is that show right here, but new comic book day was yesterday, and I made it to my LCS for the first time in a few months, so I was super happy to do that, but new comic book day was crazy. How was yours, Jack? Oh, it was great, Brian. You know, a lot going on. DC Comics dominated the day. Definitely had a few releases that you need to be on the lookout for that I'm excited to talk about. But also, our channel sponsor. Shout out to Frankie's Comics, who dropped that TMNT, The Last Ronin number one, Peach Momoko exclusive, virgin cover, limited to a 1,000 copies. That came also with that sketch canvas cover, limited to 250 copies, only available as a set. Sold out instantly. But that's not all, Brian. You need to be in the Frankie's Comics Facebook group. We've told you several times on the channel. We're going to keep telling you not only do you get free shipping, not only are certain books exclusive only to Frankie's Comics Facebook group members, like that Peach from Moco Yoda book that you see tearing up the secondary market, but also you get early access to these pre-sales. That's what happened with this book, and that's why you saw such a fast sellout. And with that being said, we're going to get into the first appearances. First book we're going to talk about is Batman number 92. This was highly solicited, highly hot prior to the COVID and the stop at distribution, but this was originally going to be the cover for 94. They moved it up to 92 right with that cover B, and we get the first appearance of the Underbroker. First full Uh, appearance, sorry. Yeah, first full appearance of the Underbroker. Uh, Unreal demand on that art germ variant, which is why they ended up moving it up. Um, you, you're going to hear people talking about maybe it's not performing on the secondary market or that it's readily available at retail shops. Well, that's because everybody saw it coming. But when you have a book like this, your supply is going to be high. The demand is also high. It's going to take some time to sell out. Retailers aren't stupid. They want that book on shelves. That's an easy three ninety nine dollars sale all day, every day. Um, but that's a great book for the PC, great punchline cover. And it's really all going to be dependent on where punchline goes. Underbroker is another character where I think uh, he's going to tie into the, this whole storyline. I think these cast of characters are really, um, if anything, some of the other ones are undervalued because everybody's so focused on punchline. Uh, the designer or underbroker, I think, are going more uh, kind of under the radar, just in comparison, which, which, Punchline, I get it. Why she's a clear favorite. There's, there's certainly enough reason for that. Um, the other thing is you mentioned that one in 25 variant. DC rarely does them, but they're doing a whole series of design variants throughout this. The one thing that I think is negatively affecting this is we mentioned the uh, art term book being like readily available at LCSs. Too many flexing picks on Instagram, Brian. Too many, too many retailers and resellers putting up pictures showing 40, 50, 60, 125s. I've seen that um, from several, several, several places. Um, And what that does is it gives an unreal perception of, uh, you know, that this book is just everywhere. When it may just be a few retailers who order that heavy, you know? And that's one of those things we've seen that. I remember, do you remember the Adam Hughes uh, Thor variant? And there was a retailer that put up a picture of, maybe like 100, 1 in 50 variants. And that really negatively affected the overall sale of that book, even though those books existed no matter what. I think that was even a 1 in 100, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. exclusives were out for that also. Yeah, and I think that retailer had like a multi-cover exclusive type deal, so they they had a lot of books ordered. Um, But yeah, it's just, those are the types of things that as we move into really a social media driven um, kind of comic market, that I think retailers are going to have to think twice about is, you know, yes, my stack of a certain book looks cool, but is that going to give a perception that then this is not scarce and therefore um, you can wait on it and then that drives that price down. Good for collectors. It's going to hurt the resellers or, or retailers who are trying to make money on it. But either way, um, this is definitely one that if you waited versus buying the presale, you, you, you definitely benefited 
uh, as, as prices have dropped t- pretty tremendously on this one. Unless you're Midtown. Yeah, well, unless you're Midtown. Like that. Well, that's what happens when you, you're in bed with DC Comics. you got to keep those prices inflated, right? It'll be interesting to see if that's a trend that we see continue. The next one we're going to talk about for first appearances this week is that Legion of Superheroes number six. This one, the buzz kind of started hitting late last week, maybe a little bit earlier than that, but you started seeing that gold lantern, but there's also some other first appearances, right? Yeah, there's a, um, a new Dr. Fate. Um, there's also a, a, uh, uh, a third character in there, I think a monster character. Um, now, here's the tricky thing about this, and I did get a comment um, from somebody on the Bolo list, and, and I totally agree that some of these characters, there's previous appearances. I think each of these characters that previously appeared in a book. Um, so why is it on the first appearance list? Well, it's on the first appearance list because this is a book that was already getting labeled throughout the market as a first full appearance. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't watched, my feeling on that is a, a character's first appearance is the first time he appears in a comic. I hate the argument between cameo and first. In a comic. Book. Yeah, in a comic. In, not in a preview magazine, uh, you know not on, a, on an action figure or something like that, definitely in a comic. But uh, that's one of those things where, um, uh, you know, we want to try to give an accurate representation of the way the market's looking at it. It doesn't necessarily reflect my personal appearance, my personal feeling. Um, and I remember when I had the Gold Lantern previously on the first appearance section, people got mad about that and said that, you know, well, is it a cameo? Is it really a full appearance? Um, and that's, you know, these are the types of arguments that, it, it stinks either way. But all three of these characters, I think this is going to be the book that kind of is the go-to book for these characters. I think the cameos will spike some if, if, if this book continues to hold weight. But solid secondary market value, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is not a heavily ordered title. It was kind of panned early. Um, a lot of anticipation. The secondary market didn't love it. So we'll, we'll have to see where this one holds long-term. Kind of depends on how used these characters are going forward. That's going to wrap up the first appearance section for us this week. But now we're just going to move right on into the reader buzz. And here we have Batman Adventures Continue number one. This had a bunch of different covers for it. I like the blank variant. I also like that Dan Mora variant. But our channel sponsor also has that Peach Momoko Harley Quinn variant as well. Yeah. That Peach Morocco variant is perfect for this series. I really like the way the cartoon style kind of works. I think of all of the different variants that I've seen produced for this book, the ones that I like the most kind of hit that cartoon style. You mentioned Dan Mora. Really great addition, him jumping in, doing a lot of these covers with DC Comics. We've talked about him frequently on this program, specifically with his work with Power Rangers. So glad to see him starting to get kind of a larger exposure. I'm a big fan of this series, this, this whole concept, bringing back Batman Adventures. I think it plays onto one of the trends that we've talked about regularly, which is that 80s and 90s nostalgia. Um, if you watch on our channel, we have a top 10 list of the uh, comics based on cartoons. Sitting atop that list is Batman Adventures. We really feel like this is really a series that kids grew up in. This is their version of Batman. Um, the way some people identify Michael Keaton as their Batman, or some people will identify Christian Bale as their Batman. Um, hopefully nobody identifies Ben Affleck as their Batman. But, you know, at there's a whole generation of kids where Kevin Conroy, that's their guy. So bringing this series back, it just seems like a no-brainer. I think it's going to be fun. I hope we get more of these animated books. It would be great if this spawned off into some of the other adventure series. If you remember, like there was Batman and Robin and Batgirl Adventures and Superman Adventures. If we could get more of that and maybe some original ones that we didn't get, like Wonder Woman, who's become more popular, or you know, you can go into Green Lantern or things like that. I think that would be fun. And you've got the HBO Max app where maybe we could see these back in animated form. I was say, what if they did a Harley animated based on the DC Universe Harley? That would have to be Black Label. <laughs> yeah. If you've ever watched that show, that is Black Label only. You don't want children picking that up then. The next one we're going to talk about for Reader Buzz is Nightwing number 71. I thought I remembered the solicits for this saying that punchline was going to be in this issue i might be mistaken it might be 72 73 but i thought for sure it was 71 but i didn't see it in the book it's still a great still a great read i actually enjoyed it joker shows up of course yep. uh ties into the joker war uh, but yeah i was like i thought punchline was in here 
Yeah, it may have been. It may be another issue. Um, I know that there's a few. All like of the next three issues of this uh, series are going to end up being a part of Joker War. Yeah. I really feel strongly about this book long term. If the Joker War becomes a story that we're it, we're not going to know until it plays out. James Tinian's kind of a mystery style writer, so so his stories you're not going to really know where they're going until you get there. And if this turns out to be one of those like iconic Batman stories which again, I don't think we're going to know till a little further down the road. Uh, on top of those first appearances, like we talked about designer and underbroker and that, what the clown character, as well as the clown killer. And, uh, and I mean, you do uh, have Tusk in this issue. Punchline. Um, all of these characters I think will have value. Uh, I think as well as these tie-ins because Nightwing is printed considerably smaller numbers than Batman. So if people want to start putting these sets together and that's something we saw with Dark Knight's Metal where these, uh, you know, yes, Teen Titans 12 had Batman who laughs, but if you remember, I think it's Greenland, Green Arrow 28. It's one of the Green Arrow issues was a, a Dark Knight's Metal time. That was a $25 book, straight reader buzz, straight collectors putting sets together. I think this has a lot of that potential. I love the cover B on this. Another artist, uh, Alan Qua. Um, Qua, I was, I was going to butcher his name. Alan Qua is another artist who, this is another reason why we're big supporters of uh, retailer exclusive variants, made his way in the retailer exclusive game, you know, introduced to a lot of people through a lot of different books, including Ninja Turtles books from Frankie's Comics, one of our channel sponsors. And now he's doing these DC covers and really killing them. And I think people are going to really get to know him over the next coming months when they see what these DC cover bees have the potential to be. The guy is a, a real talented artist. Yeah. Great art. Definitely check him out on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, yeah. So a little, a little bit of spoiler alert. We're talking about how it ties in Joker or, I mean, Joker pretty much lets him know who he was. Let's lets him know who he is again. But this time also he, he makes him think that the Joker is the person that he can trust and follow and, and, and take in and, basically be his new daddy <laughs> but great story nonetheless the next one we're moving over to is that joker 80th anniversary 100 page super spectacular right bunch of different covers that had the decades covers again hard to choose which one i picked this one up this is one of the ones that i was getting ready to start to read but i wanted to read it all the way through um started reading the scott snyder story at the beginning either way great story did you have a favorite cover um I don't know. There's a lot of really good ones. Um, Delato, Bermejo, Delato, the later I, Jock. I, I mean, it was yeah. Was, like, Delato and Bermejo are the two that come to mind the most. Um, I, this is going to sound like a terrible pick, but I, I also really dig the blank variant. Yeah. Um, I think Joker sketches are not. I, when I say simple, I don't mean that they're, you know, they're not a talented artist isn't putting his talent into it, but it's kind of a quicker character design to do. And so I think that these sketch covers are great. I really like the purple one that came out and the green one. Um, and now having this one with kind of the splash of green, I think is really cool. Um, and then it, the fact that it's cover price versus what we've seen with the high ratios coming from Marvel. So I think that was another cool one. This is one though where re in reality favorite. Yeah. I'd, I'd say Delato Bermejo. I probably lean Bermejo, but either way, there's probably six to eight that I like. And there's numerous you know, retail. Whenever Josh does a joker, people are like, like, yeah. Those, yeah. So. Yep. And there's numerous retailer exclusives that I think are really nice. Um, so, you know, I even almost, Midtown had a decent one. I think what they have in Hockley. Yep. Yep. And, and really cool that they used, you know, like a punchline cover. I think that was smart. Um, so, you know, Punchline's origin is in this. So this book has a potential to be a key, really, if Punchline is, is a very, very major character. Um, you look at like a character like Harley Quinn, where several of her early books and early appearances later became kind of iconic keys. This will be higher printed because all of these like 80th anniversary, uh, 100 page spectacular books, they've had large print runs yeah. to them. But. Plus it was a, a higher MSRP also. Yes, but the, yeah, but I think that will help in the long run as well. But the, it's, it's one that I think ha could have some legs long term. That's what I'm saying is this week there were several books that if somebody made the argument this is the long term play, this is the book that I'm looking at five to ten years down the road, there were several books where I feel like you could, you could make that argument about it. Yeah, I agree. But the next one we're going to talk about is probably my favorite DC book to read right now. So I was kind of excited to see this on the list. We're talking about Justice League Odyssey number 21. Jack and I talked off air. I asked if he was reading this current storyline. 
he he so we had conversations back and forth about it but um yeah all that hype i think for jessica cruz when uh justice league what 20 green lantern 30 mm-hmm. for the back and forth ones green lantern 20 uh justice league 30 31 <laughs> yeah i'm back i'm back backwards that one but that to me i see starting to come to fruition because if you're reading this in issue 12 Jessica Cruz takes on Darkseid with 2% charge in her ring, and it doesn't end well. Darkseid yeah. basically crushes her hand, crushes the ring. And, and we talked about that on this channel. We said when it happened, we were like, why is no one talking about you know, her death? Why is this not a big deal? And we said at that moment, there's no way they marketed her the way they did. If you really think about the DC Comics like logo where they put all the characters in the beginning, she's in the front. So there's no way they're going to just kill her off, but continue. So what are, where yeah, are we so going? number, number 12, she basically dies. Right. And yeah. uh, number 13, they, she basically comes back, they bring her back and she's just like a bunch of bones. And uh, next thing you know, they, they walk out and uh, then Jessica Cruz walks out right after him and she's back to normal. Basically she absorbed dark sides, Omega energy. So she's like an um, Omega lantern. Right. And it's yep. just crazy in this whole storyline. So dark side has turned, Starfire, Cyborg, and Azrael into new, new, new gods. <laughs> so he's got them fighting for him. And then you have Jessica Cruz, Orion, uh, Dex, uh, Dexstar, and they're going against, and it's just leading up to an epic battle. I, if you're not reading this, de- definitely pick it up. I think it's a better series than the Justice League series, in my opinion. This is also the better Green Lantern book, in my opinion, right now, also. If you're into DC space-type books, and especially the New Gods and the Dark Side, this is what you want to be reading right now. Yeah, and I think solid long-term plays are Justice League Odyssey 12, 13, as well as 20 and 21. I think that the, all of those books are books that very well could catch attention later on down the road. We've got a New Gods movie coming. We don't know where they're mining from. The only thing we know is it's Tom King writing it, and it, so it's probably going to come from the more modern stuff. So that I feel like a lot of this stuff is in play, and we know Dark Side is coming. Then moving on into the reader buzz, the next one I'm talking about is that Go Go Power Rangers number thirty two. Yeah, this is the last book in the series, and like a lot of um, series, the last book gets a lot of attention. We got an Omega Rangers origin in there. Um, you know, this has been the secondary series for Power Rangers, and it's always kind of been looked at that way. It has more of a cartoon style, but the thing about this is this this story has played into the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series throughout. Um, this is a overlooked series, I really feel like, with a lot it's of... It's almost very- like a companion book, like yeah, the high school it, life versus the Power Ranger life, right? It's exactly, and I think it was... I think Boom Studios did a really good job structuring it that way. So you have... Everything that happens in costume essentially takes place in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. And everything that takes place out of costume takes place in the Go-Go Power Rangers series. And I really like the way they divided that. I think that that played out really well. And uh, some killer variants for Go-Go Power Rangers really overlooked. Also in this series, we got Go-Go Power Rangers 8, of course, the first appearance of the Ranger Slayer. I think one of the biggest books um, kind of in licensed property game period we see the what that ranger slayer hasbro lightning series action figure is doing it's in crazy demand right now so I, this is a big character this has been a big series the series is ending but we know that boom has told us there's big plans coming for the whole mighty Morphin power rangers franchise when one thing ends another thing begins so stay tuned we're definitely going to have some information coming about the future of mighty Morphin power ranger comics for sure And sticking with Boom, the next one we're talking about on that Reader Buzz list is Faithless 2, number one. We all talked about, I think, the thing that got most people's attentions were, of course, those erotica variants from the first volume of this. But we got them again with number two, but this also has been a great story. They had that secret, you say secret variant, but like a thank you variant, but they released it to LCSs a week before. So definitely glad to pick this up. Haven't been able to read this issue yet, but I did like the first volume. Yeah, real popular uh, reader series. Um, one that is kind of like a don't judge a book by its cover thing. It's real easy to think that it is um, n- not in a derogatory way, but maybe like a Zen Scope type of book or one of those kind of lesser. Boundless. Yeah, yeah. Boundless is more the idea of when it's it's really, um, it, you know, it's yeah, a lot of erotic, uh, you know, or fiction, a lot of fantasy, but it, it really, it, 
it's not overdone. It makes it sense lends in the itself story. to the story rather than yeah, yeah. It's not. It's it's right. It's not. It's not sex for sex sake, which which is something that to me I, I'm not interested in. Um, that's not why I read comics. So there's separate media outlets for that stuff if you want that stuff. But I like. I, I'm a big. So I'm a big fan of the series because I think it caught me off guard. I was. I'm ready for the second volume. I like that boom doubled down here though, Brian. Not only do you get those erotic variants back, which definitely were a big hit, we also get this cool Chris Anka connecting variant set, which I think will be popular. We saw the way that people pieced together variants uh, for this set in the first volume. I expect to see the same in the second volume. This is a big winner for Boom, uh, and it's one that, yeah, I, I don't know. You, your gut immediately says maybe this isn't for Netflix, but Netflix has a wide variety of offerings, um, so anything, I guess, is possible. Yeah, we got Carol Baskin on there. We, you never know what you can get. All right. But that wrapped up the Reader Buzz section. I always like the Reader Buzz section because that's where you're getting the, the meat of the comic copy. It might not be the great picks. It might not be the best picks that are moving on the secondary market, but you always have great stories in there. So if you're watching this right now and you have a book that didn't make the Reader Buzz that you enjoyed reading, like Flash, for instance, is one of the books that I enjoyed this week. But let us know in the comments and let, you know, let us know what you think of the reader buzz list that, that we have as well. And we're gonna move right now into the variant buzz section. All right. First one on the variant buzz section, we're talking about Bitter Roots number eight. This is that Purple Rain homage. I think a lot of people may or may not have been aware that the homages before this were all like a one in 10 incentive. This one was actually open order. So I think a lot of people were expecting this to have the same demand. It yeah. turns out they're quite available at your LCS to pick up. Right, right. Well, there, I think there is the same demand for the book. I think that, like you mentioned, the supply of this one is just vastly different. Um, Bitterroot is a series where we're, we're, we were sitting on issue six when they started doing these homage variants. Um, you know, issue six isn't an area where you start – seeing a lot of uh, retail shops still ordering heavy. So at that point, they're basically ordering for their pull list customers who are, um, you know, reading this series, they're in all the way, and then maybe a few for the shelf. So there was a lot of smaller LCSs, Brian, I think didn't even order 10 copies, or if they did, they barely ordered 10. They got one, they didn't necessarily know what it was gonna be. Um, but we've known about the popularity of this series. We've long been advocates of Bitterroot. Um, we covered their panel at Heroes Con last year. They're good guys. Um, the story is incredible. If you're not reading this book, I definitely, it's not a reader buzz pick this week, but I'm telling you, it's my personal reader buzz pick every month when it comes out. I picked up the variant and then I always pick up the cover A just because yeah. I love Sanford Green's art. Yes, and I really think that the, the movie, I think, is going to be a huge deal, uh, especially when you look at the climate of our country. I, I, it's one of those things where I think that this movie is going to uh, tell a story about a certain era, um, and, and, and it really, it, it's kind of by the people um, who have grown up uh, to kind of be generationally affected. It's, gonna, it's an amazing story. Um, and this cover B... Purple Rain, man, we've talked about this before, Brian. People have a feeling about Purple Rain. I don't know what it is, but it just, whenever there's a Purple Rain homage, people And people get, on, as yeah. soon as you see it, you know what it is. Yeah, people go nuts. Think about that Batgirl variant from the New 52. Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes variant, which goes for like $500. It's, it's an absolute G.I. Joe ghost. Um, and that Batgirl variant is the only variant from that movie series, even though there's a lot of nice ones. I'm real partial to that. Uh, Joker, um, Batman 40 mask uh, yeah. homage. But I like that, the Teen Titans Lost Boys. That's a good one too. But that that there's a lot of nice ones. But the thing is that that Batgirl one is the only one that penetrated and I'm just convinced it's based on Purple Rain. Man, you do Purple Rain, people get excited. But this is one that's going to be a sneaky one, Brian. This will catch people over time. Because Bitterroot still doesn't have a It's not a large print run. It's just, right. just more available than the – Right now. Before. Right now. Yeah. But this is one of those covers people are going to buy in PC. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to sneak up on people two, three years from now. So this is what I'm saying. I could put this book as my long-term play. People would argue with me today. But I feel really good that two, three years from now, this will be a $15, $20 book. All right. But the next one we're talking about on the Variant Buzz, this is something that's kind of – Threw me off guard because we're talking about something that's killing the children. We're talking about number seven. We're talking about an incentive variant for it. 
there is heat on the variance for this. You look at what five and six, the FOCs and the incentive variance did. Um, not too disrespectful. And they're all, it's a lot of Rios art. A lot of Rios art is taking off. Um, and I'm not knocking him because I don't, I don't know, though, that it's him per se that is the one doing it. Um, I think a lot of attention is being paid to this series. If you notice, most of the covers that are really taking off from the series are ones that feature Erica Slaughter. That's why I've been saying this, man. That's the coolest character in comics, Brian. That's the most marketable character. When that character hits Netflix, you're going to see merchandise in Target everywhere. Every kind of merchandise you could think of. That is that I can. You just got to bank on that. And I think that this book is a a being popular to the point that we had to put it on a list because so many people were posting it. Is really indicative of what five and six are doing on the secondary market. So I think those books being strong, which is funny because two, three, and four, nothing. Yeah. One is hot, of course. Two, three, and four, very little movement. Uh, and then all of a sudden you, you start to get five and six heating up. So two, three, and four could be books to be on the lookout for. They could just be, you know, not getting the attention that they deserve. Yeah. And if you haven't been reading this and you've been liking, but you have been reading Batman and liking Batman, highly recommend you just pick up the volume one trade. James Tinian's writing this one as well. And yep. another great story. Yeah. And pay attention to the last call show here on the Simplemans Comics YouTube channel, because we let you guys know in advance of final order cutoff, when these books are available, a lot of books like this that end up heating up that you maybe didn't expect to, we try to highlight those books to you before that cutoff date so you can get those pre-orders in. Save that maximum discount and make sure you are guaranteed a copy. So that's going to do us for the variant bus section, but we still have one part left, and that is Jack's long-term play. Now, this is a book we talked about in the first appearance section, but we needed to bring it back for the long-term play, add a little bit more to the conversation. But of course, we are talking about that Legion of Superheroes number six. Yeah, we usually do not cover books like this twice per show, but we wanted to do it because we wanted to talk about that first appearance versus cameo discussion and kind of separate it from why this book is a good long-term play. Now, I mentioned there's several different books on here that I really like as a long-term play. And this one's maybe the most obvious, so I almost kind of was reluctant to pick it. but it kind of hits one of those principles that I love, which is multi-character first appearance books. Anytime you can get books like that, it's like having, you know, three shots for the price of one, right? So and here, you're not looking at throwaway characters. You know, you've got a new, a, a new lantern and a new uh, um, Dr. Fate. Now, these may take a long time to play out. Uh, certainly, you know, we're just getting to the point with, with the Lantern franchise where maybe we'll see Blue Lanterns or Orange Lanterns or Red Lanterns on HBO Max soon. But, you know, well, when will we'll be your next DC Comics Presents 26? Right. I'm not saying we'll, it is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, but you're right, though. And then and this is another thing we've talked about, Follow the Money with Brian Michael Bendis. We mentioned that this series kind of has been panned a bit, but... I also think this could be a little bit of that 5G kind of thing that we talked about where, you know, I know that that got kind of shut down, but DC really wants to progress the characters into the future. They want to increase the timeline. People think that means that characters are getting replaced. It doesn't mean Bruce Wayne goes away. It just means for a period of time, we show what it would be like with Bruce Wayne aged. It doesn't mean you can't go back and tell other Bruce Wayne stories. There's plenty of Bruce Wayne stories to be told, but, I think that that's kind of the key to comics, right? If you want to keep this thing moving, we can't be stuck in the same time period. So I like this. I look at this as three characters, price of one. Um, I look at it like Brian Michael Bendis is really a driving force at DC. He's even more a driving force, I think, now um, than before. And also, this is a book where because people jumped off of it, I don't think the print run on this is extremely high. So this is one to really pay attention to. The other thing to mention here is um, I know that it's going right now for like $20, $25. I'm not saying buy it for that. I'm not saying buy it for that as a long-term play. I think that's the inflated short-term market, and that always goes down. Oh, it, just, it just inevitably goes down. Um, as next month, will readers be paying attention to Legion of Superheroes number seven to see where the adventures take these characters? Probably not. Now it did happen with certain characters in other books, but I don't think you're going to see it here. Instead, where my big advocate for this is if you were able to pick it up 
on the shelves for cover price. This is a great book to hold on to long term. Maybe you don't want to sell it for 20. I certainly can't blame you for buying for four, selling for 20. But if, if, if you want, this is a book that I think if you were looking for a long term play, this is a good one to hold on to and see where it goes. I like cover A and B. Um, but I think cover A, with the fact that you've got the images and the, the names of the characters right there, I think that may be the better book with this one. And Brian, one last reason why this is my long-term play, and it's, I know people might get mad about this, it's not from an investment standpoint. This is from a PC perspective. I got to get this because I said some monster character earlier, but it's actually the first full appearance of Monster Boy who is the character that Brian Michael Bendis designed on friend of Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel, Arun Singh, the VP of marketing for Boom Studios. Uh, Arun worked with Brian Michael Bendis. Brian Michael Bendis was a mentor to him. And uh, this is a character that he created uh, kind of in Arun's honor. So you got to support Monster Boy. I hope big things happen for Monster Boy in the future. Yeah. And kudos to Bendis and them. Looks much better in the comic book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But there we yeah. have it, guys. There's Jack's long-term play of the week. And that's also the full bolo list. That's right, the be on the lookout list. This comes out every week. It hits simplemanscomics.com Tuesday as well as Instagram, right, Jack? Yep, at Instagram, uh, Facebook, everywhere you can get it on social media. But like he mentioned, be on the lookout, simplemanscomics.com. That's where the list is landing on uh, Tuesdays. People keep hitting me up saying, how come it's not first thing in the morning on Wednesday? Well, that's because the real home of the list now is simplemanscomics.com. We will repost on all social media, but if you want to get that information first, head there. That's where that article is found with the list, graphics, and links. So like, yeah, as Jack mentioned, there's links there. Those links will take you to the available copies for sale on eBay. Full disclosure, those are affiliate links. And that money does go back to help support the channel. So we appreciate you guys for doing that. And with that being said, this is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.